Let's take it apart and start our adventure on this beautiful radio. Of course, I'm gonna fix it up, make it work, recap it, make it reliable, all of that. And uh, welcome along to a new journey. There, this will be a lot of fun. Hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, I apologize for the video quality. My phone, which I used to use for recording these videos, broke. And I have a video coming about that real soon. So I'm now using a really old phone. This is a Samsung Galaxy S4 to record this video. And I know it's not ideal, but it is the best right now that we have available. I picked up another radio for... 30 Swedish crowns this time, which is less than 3 euro. <laughs> Absolutely insane. It's an AGA, which is, let's have a look at the back here. It's an AGA radio by the Swedish Gas Container Company. And we have voltage. It's an alternating current only, thankfully. That means it's a power transformer set. Uh, this is how they suggest you ground it. It's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Long wire antenna, I'm guessing, is what they mean with that. Gramophone input, external speaker output, warning, you can die. <laughs> and the coolest part about this, back here, check this out. We have alignment instructions. How often do you find alignment instructions on your radio? You don't. It's absolutely insane. I've never seen it before. So this is one heck of a radio. And I have it turned around, of course, to the more interesting bit. I'll put a picture how it looks from the front. There's a big, deep scratch here, unfortunately. But I think we can fill this in. The rest of the cabinet is beautiful, truly. And... The yeah, it's in really, really nice condition, actually. The dial is a bit dusty and everything, of course, and needs a good cleaning, but... Yeah. I put a new plug on it, just in case we get to dim bob this tonight. But uh, I don't think we'll be quite there yet. But let's have a look inside here. And that's the first thing we're going to do, is we're going to check if the transformers are okay before we do anything with it. I want to ask... Take a moment to adore that huge output transformer. Look at it. It is massive. It's seriously the size of a push-pull output transformer. And this thing uses these European tubes, which I'm not very familiar with. EF22. What's this? EBL21. Is that what it says? Probably yes. ECH21. And they are locked also, actually. Um, let's see if I can figure out how to, there's no markings on them, there's no, like, usually there's a indicator on them, which means you're supposed to pull them a certain way to get them out, but there is none of that here, so it's going to be really, and that one is loose in the base, so I've got to be real careful with some of these buggers, let's see, is that the way I'm supposed to pull it? Nope. Yeah, these Loctal tubes are really, really irritating. You can usually force them out, but I don't want to break them. Um, I can't find any locator or anything around here, so I'm completely on my own in terms of which way to pull the tube. Not that way, not that way, not that way. <laughs> it's bloody locked or up because they suck, but whatever, we'll deal with that soon. We've got a Type 80 here, I believe. Let's take it out and have a look at it. Oh, no, it's not a Type 80, it's something completely different. But it looks exactly like a Type 80. These are these Philips bases, and they're really, really weird. Yeah, it looks exactly like a Type 80 or a 5Y3. So that's cool. 
it's a tube I'm familiar with. Yes, in a weird ass base. Look at the base. What the hell? Let's see, can we find a locator here? Nope, that's not it. Is that it? Oh my goodness. These tube sockets are so weird. These European radios are so weird. I'm not used to them. <laughs> what the hell? How am I supposed to get my rectifier in there? Here we go. <laughs> oh yeah, huge speakers. Probably an 8 inch. Absolute beauty. Got an eye tube there of some sort. Yeah, absolute beauty. It's got one of these thermal cutouts most likely that a lot of these European radios have got voltage settings set to 220 right now and in order to adjust that you're going to loosen the screw here I would probably like to set this up to 240 if it has a 240 tap because today we don't use 220 in it. yeah it does have a 240 tap it's a 220 tap 240 taps I think I'll probably leave it there. I'm gonna just tighten that screw up, but I'm not gonna tighten it so hard that I can't just easily turn it. 150, 220, 240. So, yeah, quite an interesting arrangement. I think the first thing we should do is pull this thing out and have a look underneath. I see some waxes there, but I would like to pull these tubes out. I hate these locked tubes because they're really hard to... Where is the locator pin? Seriously? How hard can it be? Well, maybe we can rotate it out. See, I'm lifting the whole bloody radio by the tube. It's not really good. Ah, oh, goodness, I hate these. I really don't like these locked or tubes. There's a good chance I'm gonna accidentally break it. I seriously can't get this fucking locked or tube out. That's ridiculous. And that's only because there's no bloody locator pin on it. <laughs> Whoa! This is the biggest service door I've ever seen on a radio. Look at this, you can almost access everything. And look at the solenoids. Everything has got red marker on it. So you can tell if the thing has been tampered with. That's insane, I've never seen that before. Wow. This thing is a absolutely beautiful radio. Look, every solenoid. <laughs> that's insane I have never seen a radio on which every solder joint has been coated with red lacquer to indicate if somebody has tampered with it it's so clean inside there's almost no dust and we have a hunt electrolytic there that one might explode We'll see. I'm gonna probably dim over this to be honest with you. It's got lots of wax capacitors. In fact, everything is wax capacitors, but there's not that many actually. It's just a few, and there's a few over there. That's where the majority of them are, but there's not that many actually. 1500 volt point one microfarad, these ones here. Probably electrically leaky, but we'll have to check. There are some waxes which survive surprisingly well through time, but most of them don't. And look at this. What the heck? <laughs> Retainers and stuff. That one seems to be broken. It's like tamper protection or something. I don't know. I can. All of them are loose, so somebody has been in here before, but... What the heck? Everything is so freaking nice. And it's not dusty all that much. It's a bit of spiderweb and stuff. But we'll clean that out. It's not going to be an issue. I am... I am quite impressed, I have to say. 
And yes, of course, we will pull the chassis out and all that, but for the moment, I actually kind of want to just do some spot checks on the transformers. Vacuum this off so it's a bit nicer, so we don't have spider webs. Do some spot checks on the transformers, make sure they're good. Uh, make sure we don't have dead shorts or anything on our filter caps and stuff. Maybe, maybe we can attach a little bit of electrons to this thing and see what it does before we go further. Okay, I just did some spot checks with the multimeter. Power transformer is good. The power switch appears to work, although it's flaky, but it probably is going to fix itself with some power. Uh, power transformer is good. The, at least according to the meter. The uh, output transformer is good. We don't have a shorted filter cap. At least we don't have a dead shorted filter cap. And this is the ground on the filter cap. And when I was measuring from chassis to it, there's 100 ohms. So that kind of tells me, and it's a very precise 100 ohms. So I think that the chassis on this is floating. Um, oh yeah. I can't really find anything that would blow up, so I think we can run this thing on the dim bulb. And that output tube here looks like an EL34, I'll show you it later, it's really big. I'm going to set on the 240 tap, so what we're going to do is we're going to hook this meter up so we can monitor the B+. Plus. Coming off of our rectifier valve of our back here, so that goes through that wire there, I think. And that probably ends up somewhere here, so we just attach the meter here, directly to the filter cap. That should be good enough. And we need a ground connection somewhere. So we'll just go ahead and grab one of those. We have a hole here, so that's kind of convenient, I guess. We can use that. Um, maybe, if we get a good enough connection there, that is. Or we can just use a hole back here, it's really not all that critical. You can just do this, not have it in the way. Limit on that, we got 100 watts of bulb right now, so we're gonna undo this bulb here. There we go. Let's so take it apart and start our filter cap adventure on this beautiful radio. Of Maybe course I'm gonna fix it up, make it work, it. recap it, Just in case, make it reliable, ball, all so of that. I'm gonna make sure the video... And, uh, all right guys, welcome so, along to a new journey. Yeah, this this will be off. a lot of fun. So we're gonna run from an isolated supply into the bulb limiters here, which can also be used as bench lights. So we got, we got a 60 watt bulb now. So we'll see what happens. Well, look at that. Oh shit. We actually have B plus already. And that's not all that bright actually. So who knows? Maybe this thing all three dial lights are working. That is cool. And I got it on the 240 tap. We got 60 volts. And the light is quite dim, actually, surprisingly so. But yeah, don't think we're conducting anything yet. And who knows, the tubes might... Oh, there we go. Starting to get a little bit of conduction, actually. Got no idea what it's set for. And I've got nothing hooked up to it, so I'm not sure what this does. 74 volts. Let's see. I hear 100 hertz hum from the speaker. So that filter cap is probably not too happy, but we don't have any shorts, so that's always a good start. See what do we have there? Minus. Oh, you know what? This is the cathode bypass for the output tube. So we got two volts on there. That's cool. It means that's working. Let's see if we can check here on this supply. 60 volt there. 70. So this is the main coming of the rectifier. This is probably the 
and this is the cathode voltage to minus two volts so that's actually correct that's how it should be um, let's see this is the output valve here and we've got coupling capacitor running to it somewhere probably here um, we do have life but the B plus is rather low I have to say but that might just be the way it is because of our bulb limiter right now so 70 let's screw in the second bulb here see what happens they're actually not all that bright at all and the B plus is now 130 so quite low but we also I don't know what our input voltage is to this whole thing is Increase it a bit, maybe. Remember, the power transformer is set on 240, and we have the bulb limiters here in series. Get 140 volts now. There's nothing. Got no idea what it's set to either. But all the vacuum bulbs are. Not illuminating. Oh, they are. There's the power output bulb there. Rectifier here. There's a little tube here. Bloody hell. This is inside of these bloody things. That's not going to be fun to change. You see, what do we have it set on right now? 30 to 62 meter short wave. 158 volts is actually slowly climbing up so I think that filter cap is reforming it sees it warm yeah it is okay that's the first time I've run across a warm filter cap I do believe this is the volume but I'm not sure it's a tuning and it's very worn out Yeah, now it doesn't work anymore. Oh, it spins on the shaft. <laughs> so everything is loose on this bloody radio. So you gotta tighten that up. All of these knobs need a good tightening. Everything is just loose. Loosey-goosey. Well, that's what happens when people... Oh, yeah, this one is not even tightened up at all. that one there I'm not sure if you can tighten it I think you can but the screw is right there there's two set screws on these okay I just tighten them up a little bit so that we can at least deal with it without it falling apart on me because that's really not all that fun not sure what that switch does the volume is it's 100% loose actually. Not good. Let's see if we can fix that. Okay, so I've been probing around and I'm realizing I'm probing the wrong stuff in here. So let's check the voltage on the audio output tube here. Let's see, where is it? Not there. You see, we got a negative bias voltage. Hmm, this is weird. We have some. Th the fact is, negative is good, but I can't see a cathode resistor, so I'm assuming this thing is. This is a cathode. What is this? Why is it negative? We need a schematic. <laughs> These wax capacitors in here are surprising me. So let's check this one here for example. There's a high voltage on this side. Well, not really high, but there's 50 volts on that side. Let's go to this side of it. Nothing. This capacitor is not leaky. No, it doesn't go to ground. 
This capacitor is not leaky, which surprised me. And the same thing over here. Here's the audio coupling. There is actually no leakage here. Like, if you go ahead and measure here, there is, like, nothing. There is no leakage there. So that surprises me a bit. These wax capacitors are actually not that bad in this radio. Which is good, but obviously it's going to need a recap if you're going to use the thing properly. But right now, there's a lot of dust in here on that tuning condenser. I'm going to unplug it. I can't get it to do anything at all. No crackle or nothing. However, as you hear, when I press, touch the grid of the audio tube, we get output. But... There's something wrong because I can't get anything through the preamp stage. We're gonna look at this a bit further. Okay, so this is the first step when you acquire a radio like this. You should open it up, make sure it's safe to power up, make sure that there's not an across the line capacitor that might might fail, make sure you don't have a shorted filter. Always use a bulb limiter, always. This way you get a baseline, this way you know if the radio has any serious problems or not. And in this case it's completely dead. So we're going to hook this meter back onto the B plus here on this filter capacitor. I don't think there are any other filter caps, right? I'm just checking to make sure there's not something I've missed. Up there I can't really see too well right now, but... Whoops, I accidentally shorted it out. <laughs> Let's plug it back into the bulb limiter. The B plus builds nicely and it goes nice and high even though we got it set on the 240 tap right now. Probably don't have anywhere near 240 here going into it right now. Maybe I should change that over to the 220 tap and see what it does. I switched it over to the 220 tap, we've got 170 now, we've got 190 going in from the bulb limiter. But it is completely dead, I even collected an antenna here, it's completely dead. And also the tuning assembly is extremely hard to turn. So I need to turn it in here. And it's extremely hard to turn, everything needs a good oiling. So yeah, we're going to take the chassis out. And uh, it's going to be the best thing to do. So let's take the chassis out of this. And uh, we will go from there. So that's going to be the next step. Chassis needs to come out of here. Just going to make sure I haven't set this voltage up in place. We're going to set it to That's right. Well, yeah. We're going to need to take the chassis out of this. But yeah, now we have at least powered it up, see what it does, make sure that we get a baseline. Completely dead, so... <laughs> but I wasn't really expecting much else. So let's take it apart and start our adventure on this beautiful radio. Of course I'm gonna fix it up, make it work, recap it, make it reliable, all of that. And uh, welcome along to a new journey. There, this will be a lot of fun. Right, I got the chassis out, and uh, here's the cabinet. Let's have a look at that real quick. I vacuumed it out, it was quite dusty inside. Obviously, it's not cleaned up properly, but it is a very nice cabinet. And look at this absolutely beautiful speaker baffle board. Beauty, and there's a loudspeaker, absolutely beautiful 8 inch speaker. A real beauty, this whole cabinet it is amazing, I love it. going to take very good care of this radio. And here's the chassis, a bit dusty, I haven't cleaned it or anything. Got quite a bit of dust here. Underneath the dial scale, we're going to take this off, and we're going to be extremely careful with it. Because the ink they use on this rubs right off. There is no way I'm going to clean the underside of this gloss I just can't without damaging it because this is that paint that rubs right off if you touch it and this thing is in beautiful condition there's not a scratch on the pa on the painting there so we're gonna take it out put it somewhere safe or safer at least and uh, then we can work on this and look at these bulbs aren't they beauties
Phillips. These lamps alone are old. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. But yeah, we got it out. Let's see if we can flip the thing around without breaking everything. We've got a few issues. The tuning is extremely stiff on it. Very, very stiff. So that needs to be addressed. You can just hear how dry the bearings are and everything. And here is something which doesn't work anymore because this string has seemingly broken. Whoa, 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 we gotta be careful. Where does that go? Ah, shit, it goes inside here. That's gonna be one big pain to fix. Got a hunt skip has to do there, hunt electrolytic. <laughs> well, heating to explode, isn't it? And I just noticed, look at the tubes, they say AGA radio number. Every one of them does. They are the original freaking tubes, most likely. How insane isn't that? We most likely have the original vacuum bulbs. And I can't figure out how to get the bloody things out of here. Oh, did I just... Yeah, there we go, we got it out. Look at this, it looks just like an EO34 inside. It's like a miniature EO34, it's an EBL21. Made by Tong Saram. Yeah, we're gonna take these tubes out. We're gonna put those somewhere safe as well. And we'll work on it a bit. Wow, these tubes are hard to get out. Locked all tubes. Well, there you go. Starting to get them out now, which is good. Maybe I should clean them. And of course, this is the most easy one to get out. It's a rectifier valve here with these weird sockets. Let's see, so do all of them turn that way to take out? <laughs> oh my god, these locked on tubes are just bad. This one is not original, most likely, the output tube, but that's not surprising considering that thing runs quite hot. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> and uh, sometimes they hide the tubes in these, but they haven't done that. They seem to be the normal IF cans. I'm having issues getting this tube out, so I used a bit of force, and the whole tube came out of its socket, or not the socket, but like the base ring here. And uh, it's not really going to be a problem to realign this. You see, one hole here is square. And the rest are all round. You can see this pin here, where I'm holding my finger, is a square. The camera ain't gonna show it because it's a piece of crap. But so it's not really gonna be an issue to put this back in there. But the ring is obviously broken, and uh, it's gonna be a bit of a hassle. This. So there's no thing. There's much I can do. I've tried to bend these things apart in here without much success I gotta see if I can get it out with a screwdriver or something I just noticed there's some pieces of glass here so when looking closer at this tube I noticed that it cracked here around this pin can you see it probably not but yeah, it cracked around this pin here it hasn't gone through the hermetic seal though, so the tube is probably going to be fine. But uh, yeah, we got a bit of a problem because I need to get this out of here to clean. So it's going to be a big bloody pain in the butt. And I'm pretty sure we can super glue this back on, but I need to get it out first. And I've tried screwdrivers, I can't move the bloody thing. It is so freaking stuck. Yes, now we can have a closer look underneath the chassis and what a beautiful build it is. Look at this, really nice. And uh, the capacitor brand is Farad. No, I got no idea about those. Every solder joint has red paint on it. So you can tell if things have been tampered with. And this thing is 100% original. How wild isn't that? 
Nobody has been in it. I think that's absolutely incredible, the fact that nobody's been in it. And yeah, we have a broken dial wire here, which goes from this, which is actually that selector I was messing with earlier, which didn't do anything. So that's supposed to go somewhere and do something. But I'm not sure what exactly. It's supposed to go here on this, over to in, into this tube here. And then it goes inside here it looks like this part of the dial works although it's slipping down here because the thread is just worn right out so it slips and also this is going really badly so we have a bit of sorting out to do here uh, you know what, I think there's a problem here. This is not supposed to go like that, is it? That doesn't seem right to me. Um, but yeah, it's really stuck. And once again, every solo joint has red paint on it. Absolutely everything has red paint on it, so you can see if it's been tampered with. That's absolutely brilliant, I love it. <laughs> and down here we have the Rack Fire tube. And we got something clamped. In a clamp here. What's that? That's interesting. Is it a capacitor? A really small capacitor. It looks like it actually. Yeah, lots of waxes in here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have to check all those, of course, and everything. But is it a wire? Yeah. V-trome resistors, which are actually really good. They don't usually drift all that much. I actually really like those. Another radio I have, my Luxor 1460W, is filled with V-Trom as well. And it hasn't drifted a single bit. But yeah, we have some problems we need to sort out. <laughs> Broken tube bases especially. And that's a bit of a hassle. Yeah, a few of them have cracked, yeah. But I don't think the seal is broken, so I think, I really think this tube is going to work. We just need to put it in here again somehow, and I guess it's time to bring out the big guns, which is laying right here. The big guys. 